How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. If it's your first time tuning in, be sure to check out some of my other old videos. And if you find today's video helpful, be sure to leave a like or a comment. That would be highly appreciated. In today's video, I'll take you through setting up a mail server to quickly uh, test your email notification logic. We'll then deploy our email server on Amazon ECS uh, so that our team members or anyone else working on the project can preview emails as well. Before you continue with the video, make sure you already have a project or a function set up uh, that will connect to and use the Mailhog mail server. The easiest way uh, to run Mailhog locally is by running it in a container. For that, we'll use Docker. So first download and install Docker on your machine. Then in your project root directory, create a docker compose.yaml file. So in our docker.compose.yaml under services, we'll define our mailhog service. The image for our service will be mailhog. So the image and its details can be found on Docker Hub. You can just search for the image that we are using here. And then for our ports, we'll expose port 1025 and port 8025. So I'm going to cd into my project directory where I have my docker compose file and then I'm going to run docker compose up. This will basically build and run the service in my uh, docker. So there we have it there. And then if I click on this URL, then I have access to uh, the web client, which is running on port 8025. So I've gone ahead and set up a send email function. Uh, so as I advised earlier on, be sure to have your email notification logic implemented already. In this case, I'll just set up, I've set up a function where I'll just pass in my email uh, message, send an email and two email. And these are the imports I'll be using here. And then I'll go ahead and paste in my function. Okay, so there we go. So as you can see here in my send email function, I'm passing along the sender email, sender password. Although the sender password is not necessarily required for Mailhog, uh, that's not really uh, essential. And then the recipient email, subject, and HTML content. So this HTML will basically be like a string of our HTML content that we pass, which will uh, include the CSS to style our email body. So here are my variables, send an email, send a password, recipient, and subject. And then I'll go ahead and define my HTML content. So it'll just be basic HTML. And here the connection failed. because i um, trying to connect to the wrong server. So we just need to change that to localhost. And this SMTP port has to be 1025. Okay, that failed again. We need to uh, change. So Mailhook doesn't support uh, TLS. We just need to change server start TLS as well to disable that. So now if we try sending out the email again, that should uh, go out successfully. And then uh, here there we have it. So we have our hello. Uh, this is the body of email. And then as you can see, our subject is also being passed there. So now what we can try out is sending a more well laid out uh, email body. 
So a more custom HTML uh, template, basically. So let's go ahead and try that out. So I'll go ahead and paste in my updated HTML template. And then if I send an email again with that HTML content, we should get a pretty uh, a well-designed email body, as you can see, with a nice button and all of that. So as you can see, you can customize your email body uh, and test out your full functionality uh, for your email uh, notification service that you have in your application. So now the next step is to actually deploy MailHog uh, so that other team members can connect to it and preview uh, emails instead of using a uh, paid for email service. So what we can do is actually deploy this on Amazon ECS. And by doing that, we can expose MailHog to the internet and others can connect to it as well. So to do that, head over to uh, ECS, so that's Elastic uh, Container Service. And then we'll go ahead and set up a new cluster. This will be our MailHog cluster, so we'll only deploy MailHog in this cluster. I'll keep all the uh, settings as default. Okay, now that's created. And then the next thing we'll need to set up a task, de uh, task definition, which will basically uh, describe the service that we want to deploy. So let's go ahead and create our task definition. The name will be MailHog, and then the image uh, we'll pass along here, which will be pulled from Docker Hub. And then the container ports that we need to uh, add is 8025. And then uh, we'll need to add our environment variables. So here's the environment variables uh, that you need to add. The first one is mailhog uh, port, which is 8025. I mean 1025, sorry. And then the web port is 8025. And then we also need to define our SMTP port, which is the same as our mailhook port 1025. And then the API port as well, which is 8025. And then go ahead and click next. And then I'll leave the values here as default. And click next. And then next again, create. And then in our cluster, we'll define a service based on the task definition that we just created. that we can select launch type there, that should be fine. Application type will be service. And then our task definition will be mailhog. So every time we update our task definition, uh, there'll be a new revision. So currently it's uh, revision one. So every time mailhog uh, is updated, so in, like maybe when the environment variables are updated, that, that will create a new um, task definition revision basically and then we'll use an existing security group so here we need to um, add some inbound rules we'll do that after this and then let's go ahead and create this service so we'll give it a moment to create okay so that's created and then if we go under tasks
and then click on the current running task. So this is the instance of Mailhawk that's currently running. And then if we open it, if we open the public IP, this is where it should be running on port 8025. But at the moment, it, this should not work because of some in, missing inbound rules. So let's go ahead and fix that. We will simply open the security group uh, that we uh, that I highlighted earlier on. So on the task, go on to networking. And then click on the security group that's there. So this is the one I copied earlier on. And then in the security group, we need to uh, map port 8025. And let's just add a description there saying HTTP for mail server. And then we also need to add another rule for port 1025. And then it's MTP port for our server. As the description. And here, block security group ID. Let's just add anyway. Let's just add that and then save the rules. And then just give this a moment, it should run. Okay, there we go. So that's been deployed. And then what we can do now is in our terminal application that we set up earlier, we can connect to this uh, IP address as the uh, host server instead. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's just update of send uh, email function. So SMTP server will be our IP that we have. Okay, let's see. We can try it out now. But I think uh, I should actually remove the HTTP and forward slashes. Yep. Okay, yeah, let's, let me do that. And then let's try again. There we go. And there we have our email. So, yeah. In this case, you could have your app running locally that simply connects to this uh, mail server that's here. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, until next time, cheers.